Hello. I've been trying the altitude hold feature of the multi-wee flight controller recently with my cheap ass quadcopter and it didn't go too great. Um, you can see that in my last video. After I figured out what the meanings of the PIDs or so-called PIDs actually, it turns out that the D term of that is not the derivative of error as it normally is in a PID controller. But once I figured out what those numbers actually did, I managed to get the uh, altitude hold working a little bit better than in my last video, but still it wasn't really that good, not, not as good as I'd hoped for. So I thought I might try upgrading the barometer on this board to see if that uh, made any difference. Now I haven't tested this yet, um, it's been raining a lot here lately so I haven't managed to get any time to go out and try it. But I thought I'd make a video to show how I did this because it's actually quite easy and you can just change, you can upgrade your barometer by just fiddling with a few lines of code in the multi-resource code. So um, the board that I'm using here is the one that I used in my uh, cheap-ass quadcopter build of course and this is an IC station branded multi-wee flight controller but it's a pretty generic kind of board so you could probably do this with other flight controller boards that have um, onboard barometers or even well in this video I'm going to replace this barometer here so that's a, this is a BMP 085 barometer there and I want to instead of that one I want to use this one here so this is going to be my upgrade and this is an MS oh come on Brogus this is an MS5611 breakout board and I've just soldered a few pins on the back here just the ones that I need and so you can see there is VCC, ground, SCL and SDA so those are the four pins that you need for an I squared C connection so on this particular board we have I squared C pins available here so that's these yellow ones and once again we have SCL, SDA, 5 volts and ground there so there's two rows so you could put two U uh, two I squared C devices on there. Um, so in the code we need to we need to disable this barometer and enable our new one. So I'm just going to connect that up first um, and then we'll look at the code. Okay so that's connected up now and this particular module has a nice little LED on it so you can check that you've at least got some power coming into it. Now I have this uh, connected to my computer here through the FTDI adapter so I can see the current status of what the barometer is reading and you can see uh, up here we have the barrow square is in green so it's enabled and we can see um, in the altitude value here and let me just turn these off because I discovered you can turn these other lines off so now we're just looking at the values coming from the barometer and we're still using the the old barometer of course and you can see the values are sort of going up and down quite a bit there quite quickly so it's not very stable alright so that's that's the current state of things now let's look into the multi-resource code and see how we can change that. So I'm going to open the config.h file for starters and we can see here that I'm using this definition for my board type HK multi -Wii SE version 2. Now what that does is once you've defined that the actual sensors that this board has are defined in another file which is called def.h so it's a little bit hard to get this all on screen but I'm going to open def.h now and if you search <clears throat> through this file for that same definition you'll find this section here 
and this says we want to use the MPU 6050 accelerometer, the HMC 5883 compass, and the BMP085 barometer. Now, this is what we want to get rid of. So let's just see what happens for starters if we just comment this out and upload the program um, to the flight controller like that. Now, first thing I want to do is uh, stop and close the com for the multi wee GUI and upload that to my board and when that's done come back over here and connect and start this again now we should see okay it takes a few seconds to initialize there but once it's initialized, we'll see now that this the barrow square here has gone red. So we have no barometer available and the altitude values are reading zero. Okay. Now instead of no barometer, we want to use the MS5611 barometer. So if I scroll down a little bit, we can find that here in this Creus definition. So I'm just going to copy this section here for the MS5611 and I'm going to put that into my HK multi wee section here instead. So now we're going to use the MS5611 barometer instead. Now this is not going to work immediately and this is another reason that I wanted to make this video because I came across a little problem that I will show you right now. So let me once again stop this and close the com and upload this program to the board again okay there we go now when I reconnect we will see now we have barometer enabled but we're still getting values of zero from it. So something's not quite right here. If it's enabled, we should be getting some values other than zero. And I can, of course, move this around and lift it up and down and stuff, but it's not having any effect on the barometer readings. So it took me a while to locate the source of this problem, but if we look a little bit further into what this define here does, this will take us to another file which is called sensors.cpp and if we look in there for that definition we'll find it here and this sets up some functions to use to get the pressure readings from the barometer and if we look up here right at the beginning we have this line here which defines the I squared C address that we want to use and this is uh, hex address 77 <clears throat> and if we look in this file for the BMP 085 which conveniently happens to be just above it I scroll up here a little bit more we'll see that the BMP 085 address is 077 in hex as well well that's not going to work is it because they're both trying to be used at the moment so we didn't really disable the old barometer at all. So let's come back down here and take note of the line below that in the MS5611 section. So we have two options here. We could use address 77 or 76. And the way they are selected between is by using this pin CSB which if we have a look on our uh, where are we this way you will find at least on this breakout board this is easily accessible here by that pin there CSB so I've put another pin header on there to use and we can connect that to either ground or to positive voltage to select whether we want to use 
I squared C address 77 or 76. So in this case we don't want to use 77 because we can't because the old barometer here on the board is fixed on there permanently. We can't remove it. So we need to avoid using the same address that that one's using. So I'm going to comment out the 77 line and uncomment the 76 line. And then to make that work properly, of course, we're going to have to connect the CSB to so 76 pin CSB is connected to VCC like that. Okay, let's do that. So I just need to connect that to VCC and as I mentioned before there's two rows of pins for I squared C so I'm just going to use, connect it onto this VCC pin there like that. Yep. And now I'll upload this again and this time we'll be using pin 76 for the I squared C. Uh, and we need to stop this. Close com. Oops. Upload. And there we go. And now I'll come back here and reconnect. Now we should see we still have Barrow in the green. And now we are getting some values from the barometer. Oops, there we go. But they're nowhere near as up and down as they were with the other barometer. So the values, at least right now, they're less than 10 centimeters. So that's that's much better, isn't it? Now, let me just put this up here. And it's a bit hard to demonstrate this on all on screen, but I'm going to bring this over here. You can see even as I just picked it up off the desk it uh, sensed that. But when it's not moving it's pretty pretty steady. So if I lift this above my head, oh, actually I can't reach it above my head but it's about 70 centimeters above the desk. So it's not going up to 70 centimeters but uh, it's it's more constant than it was with the other barometer. So if I make this go up and down I can actually draw quite intentionally a sine wave with this barometer and stop. So there you go. Um, that's how you can upgrade your onboard barometer and disable it and use instead a more accurate barometer. Um, this is a little bit more expensive actually, considering that this flight controller board cost about $16 to $18 and this barometer just by itself costs about $10 to $12. Um, it's, it's getting a little bit more expensive, but still, um, I'm looking forward to seeing what difference, if any, <laughs> this makes to the altitude hold that I've been trying recently. So anyway, I hope that was interesting and uh, thanks for watching.